everyone. I'm Paulina. And I'm Mike. And this is Off Grid Hawaii. Thanks uh, for tuning in. Check out our new furniture. I just made it yesterday out of some out of some Albizia logs that were sitting in the back for about a year. I just discovered them and made mm -hmm. some cool furniture. And it smells great. So <laughs> It's a little bit rotten smelling, but I think they just need to dry out. They've been sitting in wet conditions. So, sorry guys, we haven't been on YouTube for a while. Paulina's been really busy. You've been um, really busy, too. I've been really busy, thanks to you guys. I'm getting a lot of work making more orchards. <laughs> <laughs> and Paulina's family was here. We had a good time with them. They were here for a week, so really didn't have time to make a video with that. And Paulina was also gone for a week. Two weeks. You were. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Paulina was gone to the mainland for a visit and to visit her sister, too, mm -hmm. in Colorado. So in this video, we're going to continue our little series about starting up a fruit orchard. Um, kind of like a follow-up to that video we made about Rose's orchard. So this is the part two of that video. So in this one, we're going to focus on specifically on questions concerning ripping the land and on just startup costs to start the orchard. So let's get into the video. All right, so first thing, what is ripping? Actually, good question. This is a term that most people that have never been to Hawaii or don't know anything about Hawaii, specifically Big Island, probably never heard the term ripping unless you've been doing a lot of research. Something we didn't know what it was. When our real estate agent told us that we'd have to get the land ripped in order to plant an orchard, I was like, what, what is ripping? I don't even know what it is. Right? So, <laughs> what are ripping? <laughs> so ripping refers to ripping up the lava. Yeah, it's pretty just straightforward. What it does is create an area for roots to grow and for better drainage. In some cases, I would say it's absolutely necessary, and in other cases, I'd say it's probably waste. So, ripping is done only on lava that's like flat, right? They don't do it on like the chunky kind? No, I mean, you could do it on any type, because it's basically... Um, it flattens things out. Yeah, so if your topography is like this, and you really want to be able to walk on it, and use a lawnmower, or you know, just not break your ankle while you're walking, you know. It needs to be flat, so. Some types of lava are easy to rip, some are really hard, uh, depending on the density of the rock. Mm -hmm. And is there a difference between ripping, like the rock, and just like bulldozing down all the trees to clear the land? Yeah, I'm pretty sure they refer to that as grubbing or something. And could ripping also include getting rid of all the trees? Yeah, it usually, like, if you get a lot ripped, they clear the trees first and all the soil that's there because you can't really rip if there's already soil because it just creates a lot of mud and the bulldozer can't really crush up the rocks if the mud is there. So that's one of the downsides. They have to take all the dirt off and the trees and then rip it, and then you can bring dirt back. It's uh, kind of weird, but that's, that's how it's got to be done. So what are some things you should ask yourself if you're considering ripping your property? Um, yeah, so I mean, some of this stuff maybe we went over, but we'll do it again. Um, do you have good drainage? Uh, is After a rainstorm, do you see puddles of water? That's a good sign that you don't have good drainage. And ripping might be necessary because if you were to plant a tree there, uh, after a big rainstorm or a week or a month of rain and your plants are underwater, they're most likely going to die. Some will survive, you know, maybe bananas because they like water, you know, but things like avocado cannot stand being sunk underwater for more than a day. So it's pretty necessary. If you have pooled water on your property, then you probably need to get ripped. But that's only if you want to plant a tree in that pool. Yeah. Like you could plant a tree around it too. Uh, yeah. So if you want to be more selective and you don't want your whole place filled with trees, maybe you can choose those spots that have good drainage. You know, like, um, so per acre, I 
would say you could fit maybe 40, 50 trees. Like, if you don't really need 40 or 50 trees and you just want 10, maybe you can find spots that are good for planting, you know. The higher spots with, you know, maybe cracks in the, the ground that roots can go in or you can fill with soil. What are some other pros to everything? One of the things you can do, which might be a positive to the whole situation, is if you know you want to have a lot of trees planted and destroying the native forest really doesn't appeal to you, you could find a lot that's loaded with invasive trees and everything and most likely your neighbors will appreciate that you're getting them taken down. So say it's just filled with albizia or cecropia or all these like real invasive species that just grow and fall on people's houses and stuff. If you were to buy a lot like that and have it ripped, it's it almost benefits everything, you know, versus buying a lot that is completely just native forest and, you know, sometimes to take out that stuff is really a shame. I don't know. It is a shame. So to sum it up, some pros to ripping are to increase drainage if you have poor drainage and to get rid of, like, all these invasive trees that you find on the property, and that's it. Those are the only pros. Um, and maybe also to have just a blank slate to start your new project on. Yeah, and also I would include like um, ease of like walking. You know, it's going to be a lot easier to walk if the land is completely flat, which uh, ripping can really help flatten it. And then you put it, bring in like cinder and stuff and make it so eventually one day you could use like a push mower if that's what you want to do. Otherwise, um, I mean even here I can't use a push mower and it's been ripped but it wasn't really smoothed out with uh, cinder like you probably should do if you want to push a mower. <laughs> Michael wants to push a mower so yeah. badly. So I have to level things out here a little bit with some cinder. So Paulina's going to cover some of the pros of not ripping. Okay, yeah, so if you guys watched our last video um, on Eddie's property, he didn't rip it. And he was a great example of how good it is to not rip because you are preserving all the natural trees that are already there, a lot of the native trees that are there, and also just the natural topography of the land. So lava is really cool. Like when it flows, it forms all these like very unique features yeah. um, that's that can be very like obviously unique to your own place um, and it's kind of special like the way that it forms in one spot can never be replicated anywhere else so um, not only just lava but it does form like really cool things like tree molds or like even like natural staircases like it's really really nice so if you're able to put in the work to work around that um, you can be left with like a really aesthetically pleasing place and also like a very just like natural place that you feel like you're you're not like asserting your dominance over and like the land is kind of like mm. helping you or you're just working with the land and not dominating it. <laughs> yeah I'd just like to add that if you do it that way and you preserve some of these uh, flows of lava and stuff it's very unique to Big Island. You know if you were to rip it and just plant you could look at the orchard and I mean it could exist anywhere in the world but if you leave some of these natural lava formations like uh, Paulina was saying like this pohoihoi like rope flows that like really it's cool look like rope there's tree molds there's cracks there's natural staircases I hate to just say everything you just said you everything I just said <laughs> But it's really cool to preserve that because it's so unique to this place. Yeah, to, to sum it up, <laughs> um, lava is very special to the Big Island. And if you want to have authentic Big Island land here in Puna, then you would preserve all that lava the way it is. So what are some other pros to not ripping the land? So one of the things I'm really starting to find out is that wind can be a serious problem here. And when you rip a big portion of land, 
It really creates a lot of open space for wind to come in and just rip leaves off of trees, especially ones that have been in nurseries for a long time. They're not uh, as well adapted to the wind, so you put them out there and just the uh, leaves will just blow and just eventually come off the tree. And, you know, I think they'll come back and they'll be stronger when they do because they'll adapt to the wind. But that could be really shocking for a tree to, like, just be put in this situation where all of a sudden it's just out in the open, full sun, and like full exposure to wind. So by not ripping, you can save some of the trees for wind and some shade protection, mm -hmm. um, which really could be beneficial when you're starting out with new trees. So another benefit to not having a machine bulldoze the whole property and instead doing the hand clearing um, with just like hand tools and stuff is that you can kind of select what you uh, keep there like pick and choose and you preserve a lot of the natural ground cover that's already on the ground. Yeah and if you're going through and just clearing you know say six feet of brush and ferns and stuff going through with a weed whacker and just pretty much it's just like an emulsifier and you create a mulch layer by doing that versus like if you were to get it ripped, I mean you guys see what, what it looks like after it gets ripped. It's, it looks like the moon pretty much. It's just like rock and there's no no life there. No life is left. So like you have, pretty much have to start fresh when you get it ripped versus like going through by hand and using weed whacker. You're still preserving like that little bit of soil that's built up on the top and you're adding like a good layer of mulch by using these brush blades to emulsify the brush and all the weeds and stuff that you want to get rid of. Mm -hmm. and, and then would you say would you say that hand clearing is more cost effective than bulldozing? So that we're going to get into with the startup cost but uh, I mean obviously as you guys could imagine it's going to be way less money to hand clear than to get a big machine. I mean these machines cost brand new like a million dollars so they can be pretty costly to uh, rip land and get the job done. So it could be less money to do it by hand even if you hire somebody to do it for you and also I know a lot of people just do not even like the thought of bringing in a machine like this to do the work because it's so intrusive and destroys everything which I mean I don't know it's we're not trying to sway you either way in either direction ripped versus unripped obviously like I've um, I've recommended it for some cases and for some cases I don't recommend it so it's really up to personal preference and I wouldn't feel bad about going either way I mean, maybe I would a little bit if you're taking down like hundred year old like Ohia forest it's kind of a shame but I think that if you have a hundred year old Ohia forest you will not rip it down because that's stupid <laughs> like if you want to do that then buy another lot that doesn't have a hundred year old Ohia forest yeah <laughs> so what and one example is I have a friend that bought a place very close to here and yeah, he just kind of walked on the first couple hundred feet and he's like, okay, yeah, like this is the lot I want. And then after he bought it, he, you know, explored more into it. And he, I mean, he found, oh, he is this thick, which, I mean, they're over a hundred years Bigger old. Than that. They're, they're like this they're like thick. This. I mean, I felt like I was walking through Volcanoes National Park. Uh, walking through, and the Even hapu, better. Hapu, yeah, right? Because it's like <laughs> just so raw and like. But he cleared trails through there, like hapu'u ferns, like huge, like 20 feet tall, and ohia this big. And he's just like, you know, I can't rip this. I have to preserve it. And he just settled for having probably like a one-acre orchard instead of a three-acre orchard. So, I mean, it's something that I would definitely would do, too. I would never rip down like a forest like that, especially just how beautiful it is, you know. So basically to sum it up, ripping versus non-ripping, every situation is different, so it's either going to be beneficial to you or not beneficial to you depending on what your goals are and what um, you are willing to um, put 
I've heard everyone needs to. It's kind of like, just depends on what you're doing. You just got to consider all those things that we talked about, like what's existing there, um, what you want, what they want, what's good. And if you have a hundred year old Ohia for it, don't rip it down. That's it. Yeah. And just basically, we don't want to say one's better versus the other. It's literally just case by case, you know? Um, so keep that in mind. We're not for one or for another. It's like, just... Yeah, and also, just to mention where we are right now, this property, we, when we got here, we didn't rip anything because it had already been ripped 30 years ago. So that was great. And then Ohia trees grew and native, a lot of native <coughs> ferns and stuff grew here too. Um, and then we were able to hand clear it, but obviously not everyone has that same situation that yeah. having had like a 30 years ago rich property. So. Yeah, so we actually kind of have the best of both worlds. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so for the second part of our video, we want to mention the startup cost for starting an orchard. Okay, Michael, so what are the startup costs for starting a fruit orchard? So the first cost is obviously going to be clearing the land. And there's two ways to do it, like we talked about, ripping or hand clearing. The ripping part is going to cost you anywhere from 9000 to 12000 per acre. And I would like to say from experience, you definitely get what you pay for. So the guy that I know that does it for twelve grand, you could guarantee he's going to do a good job. The one that does it for nine grand, eh, you might get a good job, depending on what your lava looks like. Um, if it's really hard, they might not get the job done so well. Um, I think the guy that charges 12 grand also has a D10, which is a bigger machine. So that helps if you have really hard lava. So the cost of hand clearing, if you're going to do it yourself, could be zero in labor anyway. You're going to need tools like weed whackers and the gas and stuff and different um, maintenance stuff for your tools. But if you were to hire somebody to do it, it's going to cost anywhere from three most likely three grand but it could go up to six and even higher depending on what kind of trees are there or how many trees are there? how many how tall what kind of uh, brushes there bushes and ferns it all depends it's different so you're gonna have to have somebody come out and look at it and then give you a price but in general i'd say three grand but possibly more okay Thanks for telling us about the clearing aspect. How about now the actual trees that you want to plant? How much would those cost? Well, as far as buying trees, there's a place called Plant It Hawaii that is probably going to be your best bet. The only downside is they only have a plant sale twice a year, one in the spring and one in the fall. And you can get the plants for probably, you know, it doesn't sound like a lot, like $5 cheaper. Because they do sell their plants at stores in, you know, town that you can buy. You could even order them, have them shipped to the store. But they're going to cost you a little bit more. So if you're planning on buying a lot of trees, it's best to wait for the sale. And then go there and pick out your trees in person. You're going to save around $5 per tree. So if you're buying quite a bit of trees, you're going to save money. The other thing is if you're going to buy uh, like over a thousand dollars worth of trees they will let you go there I think and pick them out but anything under a thousand bucks you're gonna have to order from a store and I have the list right here of the cost of trees so I'm gonna show this in a close-up and you'll be able to pause it if you want and check out all the price because there's a lot of trees on here it's not always gonna be these trees at the sale there it's always different but this is the one from the last sale that I saved. So it ranges from like $20 to like $150, depending on the size. But oh, most yeah. of them are like between $20 and $50. Yeah, what is it, three gallon pots? Mm -hmm. So like the three gallon pots go anywhere from like $25 to $50. And then they sell bigger ones that are in like kind of 15 gallon pots or whatever. Yeah. The more expensive ones are the like really good quality grafted trees that are yeah. bigger. 
So we have the land cleared, we have the trees, and now what about the soil? How much will that cost? Yeah, actually that's something you should probably get before you get trees because you don't want to have a bunch of trees and no soil. So if you're planting an orchard, you're going to most likely plant, you know, 10 plus trees at a time. So you're going to want to get a truckload of soil delivered or make your own, which is a whole other video that I'm really excited to get into. And that's going to be its own separate video. But I'll show you how to make soil or how I make soil. But if you just want to get it delivered and shovel it and put it into the place where the tree is going to be, it's going to cost you around three twenty-five for six yards and that is going to be enough soil for about 10 trees. So $325 for six yards which plants 10 trees which comes to roughly about $32 per tree. So if you only have that like 10 to plant and you only want to buy soil for those 10 then get six yards but if you have more it's obviously going to be more cost effective to buy a larger amount of soil which I mean you could get all the way up to 30 yards and you're going to get a better price mm -hmm. per tree but I did want to share the minimum like if you because that's usually the minimum nobody's going to deliver less than six yards so that's the price for just standard soil for planting trees and now what about like all the amendments and stuff that you add to it such as fertilizing so in the past we've used plenty of different amendments to add to the soil uh, you can see that in our first video how to plant the fruit tree we were adding all these amendments and we've narrowed it down to just two things that I think we need. So one of those is the coral calcium that comes from Kona side of the island and they dredge the bottom of the ocean for the cruise ships to come in. So they have this byproduct which is just coral and it's calcium and it has trace minerals in it. And that's what we're substituting for lime and azomite which we were using. So that kind of takes the place of those two things that we used to use and puts them in one product, which is actually cheaper than both of those. How much does it cost? Uh, I think it's about eight to ten, ten, eight or ten bucks per bag. How much is a bag? Fifty pound bag, um, and you can do roughly like twenty trees with it. And the other product we use is Nutri-Rich chicken manure pellets, and that's a fifty pound bag. And um, I usually fertilize each tree with thirty-two ounces, and that comes out to about 25 trees. And how much does that cost? And that bag costs, I think if you get it on sale, it's like 16, 17 bucks. So these products are really cheap and we're finding out that that's all you need and it's working for us. So then you have the soil, you have some fertilizer and calcium. What else would you add to plant the trees? So another really good product to have on the land when you're starting your orchard and stuff is black cinder and it's very versatile you can obviously if you have ripped your land and it's not even you can use it for trails um, if you have native soil there that is too muddy you can mix it with that and you can also make your own compost and mix it with that so that's actually what I'm gonna go over with how to make soil video in the how to make how I make my soil video is how I mix the black cinder with the compost to make like really good soil. So how much does the black cinder cost? The black cinder you're going to get 32 yards and the delivery fees are going to be always different depending on where you are and it's around 650 for 32 yards from Sanford. If you go to Puna Rock they're going to charge you $50 a ton and that's because they get it from Sanford. So Sanford brings it there and um, you know they sell it for a little bit more but if you just want to go fill up your truck it's probably a good option if you're close to there it was actually I filled my truck for forty dollars and that was less than a ton alright so the last thing would be just the mulch and you would need that to for planting the trees and even to just use on the property for uh, ground cover so the last cost on our list, which there's probably plenty of more things that we didn't think of, but we're trying to stick to the most important ones. And I guess we probably saved one of the most important for last, and that's the mulch. You can get it for free at the East Hawaii Organics Facility, which is located right behind the dump at, in Hilo. Kind of like back 
Near the yeah, so I just talked to Marvin and they're going to start charging to load the mulch. You can still load it for free with the pitchfork if you want. So anybody with a car is really not going to notice. If, yeah, I know people go there with cars and vans and load it in totes and stuff. Um, but if you want the machine to load your truck, they're going to be charging, I think, seven bucks a uh, scoop. And <laughs> but this may sound like a bad thing, but I think it's actually a really good thing because they're not going to limit the quantity you can take. So right now they limit it to 10 yards. So for the trucks that can hold 32 yards or you know whatever, they can only leave with 10 yards, which is kind of a waste. So. In the future, I'm not sure when this is going into effect, but they're going to be charging seven bucks and you know, times that by five, so thirty-five bucks. So that's just going to be only thirty bucks, thirty-five bucks added to whatever the delivery cost is. So I don't know. At the most, you're going to pay like I think two hundred bucks for thirty yards, but that's in the future. Right now, it's you're only getting ten yards for say like one hundred and fifty bucks which is what I think most people charge, depending on where you live, though. That's it. Is, it every, is everything clear? So I got a couple of video ideas in mind, and maybe if you guys vote on them or tell me which ones you'd like to see first, I will, you know, I might do that one first. If it's kind of like even, I'm probably just get to the one that I'm most interested in first. And uh, talking about one of them is how I make soil. Uh, another one that I want to make is actually a question I got from somebody and it's like, what tools do you use? So I want to talk about all the tools that I use doing farm work. And another one is everything you need to know about cassava. And this is one I feel comfortable making now because the roots that we're getting from our cassava, they're like the radius of the root mass is like this big and each one is like this big, maybe this long. And they're very tasty. We're getting like 20 pounds from each plant, which is more than we can eat. So I end up bringing it to people and kind of we make it, but then we save it for a couple days. And then they get tired of it and they're like, Michael, stop bringing us cassava. I know, we're just like, <laughs> I have to come up with different recipes so they make it like new. Yeah, no, but it's really, really yummy. So those are the three video ideas I have for future videos. Please let me know which one you guys want to see first. And if it's overwhelmingly in favor of one of them, I might make that one first. <laughs> Keyword might. <laughs> All right, see you guys next year with our next video. No, hopefully sooner. Uh, this channel may be taking a new direction. I talked to Eddie and he liked my idea of maybe taking the show on the road and showing you guys different orchards that we're starting and planting. Uh, I'm not sure how the episodes will be, but since Paulina is so busy with work, they even told her she cannot... Cruise ship season, baby. Yeah, she can't request days off in April. So Shame. there's a good chance <laughs> that she'll never even be home in April, just working. <laughs> Yeah, guys, so I am working a lot, and I'm really tired, and Michael and Eddie want to start making videos together, so I think that's going to be awesome, and I'll be here to help out as much as I can, but today was like my only day off in the past, like, three weeks or something, so yeah. Alright, so bye. Bye, thanks for watching. <laughs> If you have any questions, pop them down in the comments below and I'll get to you when I read them.